What's up guys? Welcome to the Chess Giant. This is Solomon Ardell, and in today's video, we're going to be covering the top four chess traps out of the fascinating Budapest Gambit, one of the most aggressive options for black against the move d4, in which we play knight f6, and against c4, the absolutely crazy looking move, e5, immediately putting pressure in the center of the board, tempting white to take our pawn on e5, but our first trap actually comes out of white playing the move d5, declining the pawn and simply trying to make space in the center of the board. And usually out of d4 chess opening type systems, d5 is a good idea against openings like the old Benoni defense or the Banco Gambit. But in this case, d5 is actually a big mistake because we do not currently have a pawn on c5 and now can use that square for our bishop pouncing down on the very vulnerable pawn on f2 and honestly in this position i think white's best option is probably just playing e3 trying to limit the activity of the bishop and just continue with something like knight c3 knight f3 and we're just playing chess however white may not want to play e3 because it does make this bishop on c1 a tall pawn so white may be tempted to play bishop g5 try to get this bishop active and then play e3 but this actually just turns out to be a big mistake because we have bishop takes f2 a check idea being after king takes f2 we can play knight g4 attacking that king and following king e1 we simply win the bishop back knight e3 is coming soon attacking that queen on d1 and black is simply winning this position going back to our original position our next three traps come out of white taking the pawn on e5, in which case we can now play knight g4 attacking the pawn. And I think part of the reason that this opening isn't more popular at the master and grandmaster level is because we really are using our knight a ton. We're moving this knight around a lot, and even in this position, white could play a move like e3 or e4, and all of a sudden we play knight f6, knight g4, all just to take a pawn back, and we've wasted some time. But really there are a ton of chess traps in this opening, and even if white plays a move like e3 or even bishop f4 right now, and and eventually gives up the pawn on e5 we have a very playable position our first trap actually comes out of the move bishop f4 in which case we now have knight c6 continuing to put the pressure on that e5 pawn and here white will probably play a move like knight f3 just simply trying to defend that pawn more in which case we can play bishop b4 check attacking the king now in this position white may not want to play knight c3 because we would take the knight and white would have isolated and double isolated pawns on c3 and c4 and white probably doesn't want to play a move like bishop d2 or knight fd2 because white would then be losing a developmental advantage so you're probably going to see the move knight bd2 in which case we can play queen e7 and against a3 attacking our bishop we're now going to take this pawn on e5 with our knight now especially on online chess if you reach this position and white plays a3 i recommend just taking that pawn on e5 very quickly white will probably think that you just accidentally hung your bishop on b4 but now we have a mate in one with knight d3 the pawn can't take because the queen would simply be attacking the king and right now the king cannot move we have ourselves a game over at move eight in this game. Now going back to this position in which white just lost the game, I mean white does not have to take this bishop. White could play a move like knight takes e5, in which case we're going to take that knight again. And for the second time, if white takes our bishop, we have a mate in one. Now if bishop takes e5 is played, we can't take with our queen because we no longer have a knight to throw on a d3 if a takes before takes place. So now we have the intermediate move of bishop takes d2, getting that piece back, queen takes e5. We're going to continue with moves like castle and king side, rook e8, supporting the queen, d6, bishop d7. We're just playing chess, and I would put this position at dead even. So that covers one way in which white can defend this pawn on e5 with bishop f4, in which we have a potential checkmating trap. Now what happens if white plays queen d4? I mean, this looks like a very powerful option, defending the pawn on e5 and attacking our knight on g4. And this knight, at least for a moment, looks awkwardly placed. But it turns out that this queen d4 move isn't very good, because we can now play d6, further attacking the pawn, and defending our knight on g4. And if a move like e takes d6, we can play knight c6, gaining a tempo against the queen. Now here, if white gets greedy, white could play queen e4, and against bishop e6, take the pawn on c7. Right now, white has not lost a pawn. They're ahead three pawns, but I would say that black is simply 
better. We do have a couple options. We could play moves like bishop b4 check or queen takes e7 followed by castling queenside putting our rook on the open file. But I did learn a very interesting move from Eric Rosen with queen d1 check. Absolutely crazy idea. It almost seems to come out of nowhere. The whole idea is that after king takes d1 we have a powerhouse fork with knight takes f2 attacking the king, queen, and and rook and in this position king c2 is simply losing king e1 is a must here in which case we can take the queen back and black simply has a big advantage here we are down two pawns but this pawn on c7 can get picked off whenever we would like it to we're actually currently attacking the pawn on c4 our knight on e4 is very active attacking that f2 square we have knight b4 and knight c2 ideas we can always get this bishop on f8 involved on d6 c5 or b4 if you plug this into a computer program it's probably going to give you about a one point advantage for black we're just playing chess and this is a very fun position to play and keep in mind that this king has moved so this king is not going anywhere and we're about to have some really fun attacking chess so that covers the move queen d4. This may look like a really strong option, but honestly it's a very weak move because we can simply play d6, knight c7, gaining a tempo on the queen, and white can go ahead three pawns if they'd like, but black is simply better in that position. What about the move knight f3? Against this, I actually think that black's best option is bishop c5, and we're going to cover this in a master level game later on in today's video, but let's first cover a fun little chess opening trap with the move d6, attacking that pawn on e5. Now here white may be tempted to take that pawn, in which case we can play bishop takes d6, and many players that you face may be uncomfortable with this knight on g4. I mean, it is an active piece, it's attacking f2, and white may just get a little bit uncomfortable. So against a move like h3 or g3 or even another quiet move like b3 or a3 we have a very key idea for example if h3 is played trying to get rid of our knight to either f6 or e5 we can now play knight takes f2 and black is simply winning this game we're attacking both the queen and the rook and if king takes f2 is played we have bishop g3 check whole idea being yes we just gave up two pieces but in return we now win the queen on d1 and black is simply winning this position now, as I mentioned, I do think that bishop c5 is the best move here. d6 is an option, and it does give white a pretty good chance of falling into that knight takes f2 trap, but white doesn't need to fall into it. And actually, after bishop c5, I really like black's game. If you're playing a strong level player and you think that they're ready for the trap you're about to throw at them, bishop c5 may be your best option. And really what I like about this move is that, yes, we still want to play knight c6, but we play bishop c5 first so that e3 needs Needs to be played and by doing this the bishop on c1 has now just become a tall pawn we're now going to be going over a master level game just going over some good old chess opening theory in which black played the move knight c6 and against knight c3 took back with the g pawn now in this game white took the knight on e5 but i do want to mention against a move like bishop e2 we can actually just take the knight and then bring our other knight into e5 attacking both the bishop and the pawn on c4 and white may be tempted just to save that bishop and protect that pawn in which case we have the same position as the game as mentioned previously in this game we see knight takes e5 followed by bishop e2. Here black castles kingside and then plays the move rook e8, simply getting the rook on the open file. A very nice move from black in terms of chess opening strategy. And here white played a3, making its intentions clear, trying to expand on the queen side of the board. So we see a5 from black, simply preventing white from playing b4. And here one of the most popular options at the master and grandmaster level for white is b3, simply looking to fianchetto this bishop on b2. However, the purpose of a5 was actually two-sided now yes it did stop white's queen side attack but on top of that it gives us attacking chances of our own with rook a6 this has been played 12 times at the master and grandmaster level with great success and really the whole idea behind this crazy looking move is to get our rook involved on an open file either d6 attacking the opponent's queen g6 attacking g2 or the main idea of playing rook h6 queen h4 and we're going to have ourselves a very fun mating attack now here in this game white played bishop b2 and we see the move rook h6 eyeing that pawn on h2 now keep in mind white is a master level player and black still went on to have some very fun attacking chess 
following the move knight d5, really trying to centralize the knight, we see d6, getting this bishop involved. And here white played b4. And really, I think this is where the tides turned. Now, yes, if we do play defensive chess by taking this pawn and then playing some passive move like bishop b6 or bishop a7 immediately, we're going to have ourselves a very passive position. However, we don't really care about the bishop on c5, but are simply going to play queen h4, threatening a mate in one. And against h3, black continued with bishop takes h3. Now here, if white takes back, we simply take back with our queen, and we are about to have a mate on either h1 or h2. So here, white didn't take and instead played g3. But again, black keeps the checkmating threats alive with queen e4, threatening queen g2 with the game over. So we see f3 and no player ever wants to play a move like f3 yes it does prevent checkmate but now the pawn on e3 hangs idea being after knight takes e3 queen takes e3 check is now in the works attacking the king and now after rook f2 the very natural attacking move queen g5 simply attacking that pawn that currently doesn't have any protection so we see the move bishop takes e5 from white and now rook takes e5. White continued with bishop f1, trying to somehow get the defense going. But now, after queen takes g3, white actually resigned the game. I mean, after a move like bishop g2, black could simply continue with rook e h5. And I mean, talk about attacking chess. We have so much momentum on the king side of the board. But I do want to mention that in chess, we always need to be careful. For example, if a move like queen a4 is played, we may be tempted just to take the bishop on g2 with the idea of rook h1 checkmate coming next. However, if we do this, well, we're simply going to lose the game because of queen ea checkmate game over. That would be absolutely devastating to have such a beautiful attacking game and then lose with queen e8. So here we can actually play bishop d7, a very fancy move attacking the queen. We're either going to win the queen or if the queen takes our bishop, have a mate in one as the black pieces. If you'd like to learn more on the theory behind the elephant gambit, a very fun chess opening against e4, click the video to the left. If you'd like to learn more about the Vienna gambit, a fun and strong chess gambit for white, click that video to the right. Leave a comment to let me know what other videos you'd like to see covered on this channel. And as always, I appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching. Peace.